Right, cool. So, so everyone today we're going to be talking about connecting your Cypress projects to Cypress dashboard and Jenkins. Uh, and the reason why you might want to do this is to make it easier to run and control any large automated test projects that you have. Um, and as such, the key takeaways would be talking a bit about how you go about connecting your project, as well as a quick overview on both Cypress dashboard as well as Jenkins and talking about what they are. So the first thing is the project setup. Now, all of this you guys are probably already aware of. So creating your project folder and then linking it to your IDE of choice, um, creating your package.json file by running npm init, and then also installing Cypress as a dependency and creating your any custom scripts that you might need. Uh, the key things is when in order to connect Cypress to dashboard, is that we need to actually run Cypress first. So as you can see, I've already run it. And as you can see, we have all the different folders for Cypress and opening up the actual test runner itself. What you wanna do is go to the runs tab. And now, since I've already done it, we can't see it, but luckily I captured an image earlier. What you'll see is this blue button here and you click on that and it will give you two things. It will give you a project ID and basically a custom command for you to run in your IDE. So what this does is the project um, ID itself is what links your project to Cypress dashboard and it will automatically appear here. And that command that we've been given, which is this one here, will actually run your tests and have them be recorded on the Cypress dashboard um, so once that's done, that you have Cypress dashboard connected, which is, so it's pretty quick and easy. Uh, the second thing is connecting Jenkins. Um, this one's a little bit more complex, but it's still um, fairly simple to do. The first thing you'd want is to go to the Jenkins.io website, and you'd want to download this generic Java package and essentially all you want to do is to drag it into your main project folder. So I have it here right now. And from here, all you need to do is essentially run this command so that you can open up that Jenkins file as a server on a port of your choosing. So in this case, I'm choosing port 880. And from there, what you can do is you can actually go to that onto your local host in your browser. And basically what will happen is in your IDE console, you'll get a admin password, which you put in to unlock Jenkins. And from there, it's all about creating uh, an account and basically just installing a few plugins of your choice and going through the setup wizard, which will pretty much carry you through the whole um, setup pretty easily. And that's pretty much it for connecting it. Um, I could go into more detail, but since I've already done it, it will be difficult to do so. So I'm gonna move on now to just talking about Cypress and Jenkins themselves. Starting off with Cypress dashboard, this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm currently logged in as myself. I'm using my own personal organization since I'm doing this just uh, for my own personal project. So essentially what Cypress dashboard is is just a service to see your, your test ones for your main project so as you can see my project is appearing here thanks to that um, project ID that we got and if I click on it we'll see it it goes deeper into the project into all our latest runs and as you can see we have four different runs with some basic information, mainly telling us, you know, tests that have been skipped, tests that have not been done yet, tests that have passed, and those that have failed, as well as some other information, such as if you look here, this commit did not come from any type of CI, but if you look at this one, number two, three, and four, we can see that they all came from Jenkins and they have their own build numbers. 
other things such as how long ago they were ran and as well as duration. And of course you can also filter on each run. So now I'm gonna quickly click on one of these runs here and we'll get even more information. So what we have here is we have our um, Git, GitHub information, if you have it connected. I currently don't, so it's all blank. We have our time, so when it started, when it ended, total duration of the test. Again, our CI with Jenkins. We have our OS information, as well as our browser information, and then finally our Cypress information as well. If you scroll down a bit, we can see all the different specs that we've run. This bar might be segmented to show all the different tests as separate. And then here we have the total past, total time for each test. And then again, some information about what we were running on. Some cool things is you can see the output, our console output of the tests, which is very similar to what you'd see in your IDE. And it's just the same thing again, seeing what tests passed and whatnot, duration, and whether it's recorded a video, assuming you have that feature turned on. And if you do, you have the ability to see your video here. Um, this is pretty useful, particularly if you don't want to have to run a individual test and then see what went wrong. You can just view the video instead. So if I skip ahead here, you can see the test actually running. And of course, it picks up the actual website you're interacting with. So you can just view this to see if anything went wrong or to see how it interacts with the website. Um, lastly, you can also enable screenshots. And that's mostly it for actually running the tests. If I go back, I can show you a few other things. Um, Cypress dashboard is very scalable. So there's a lot of different plans that you can use based upon you know, the size of the project and the size of your organization. So of course I'm using just the free plan for my own personal use, but I have a bunch of other stuff as well. So scalability is pretty simple. And then of course there's different settings as well. And you can set up different users if you wish. And that's pretty much it for Cypress dashboard. It's pretty simple to use. And the main thing you'd be looking at is you, your actual project and all the different test runs. So now I've got that out of the way, we're gonna move on to Jenkins. Um, now Jenkins has a lot of different features. Essentially it is a CI tool and you can connect it to Cypress dashboard, like I mentioned, so that you can run all of your tests through Jenkins rather than running them uh, alone on your IDE. So I'm gonna show you if you go to the main screen here. You'll see, you should see our main project in the list. So like Cypress dashboard, Jenkins is um, very easy to use, but it does have a lot more features and options that you can look through. Once this is downloading. Cool. So I'm going to quickly log in. And here we are at the main page. So as you can see, we can see our project here, Cypress dashboard. And we can see some quick information, the last success we had, the last failure, and the last duration of our test, or rather our build. So some key things to look at, we're gonna click on our project. And immediately we have some all of things here, such as build history, uh, our workspace, and we can also do things such as delete, make a new build. But the main thing you want to do first is to go to our configure menu.
It's a bit slow there, Nick, today. It is. Um, I'm not sure if that's just my machine. Uh, I, for others, it may be a lot faster. So here we have the main configuration menu. Um, key things you want to look at, description, just to describe what your project is all about. Um, this project is parameterized. This is a nice little feature. Essentially what we want to do is if you have in your package.json file, if you have a set of custom scripts like this. So in my case, I have commands for running Cypress and Chrome, Firefox, Electron, and then just running it straight to the dashboard. And I have them all simplified. And what I can do is I can name this script, put in these commands as different choices, and then put a description telling, you know, reminding you or telling any other users what your choices are. And if we do that, if we scroll down, we have this section here called build, and you can choose to execute Windows batch command, or if you're running on Linux or Mac, you wanna do execute PowerShell, what you can do is you can do the simple npm run command, but instead of doing the regular command of running Cypress, you can do this parameter here for script. And what this will do is basically when we get to building our project, which I'll show, you can choose from this list of commands here. So instead of just having to always type it out, you can just click uh, from a drop down menu what do you want to do. Another thing, if we scroll just below that, we have this advanced button. And this is what we want to do to basically tell Jenkins where your project files are. So we do click uh, use custom workspace. We put in our directory and we put in our display name. And that will basically tell Jenkins what your project is and where it is on your computer. And then of course, as you can see, there's a lot of different um, options here. Like I said, you can use whichever one you want based upon what you need for your project. Um, but I won't go too much into that. And that's pretty much all the key stuff to look at. You can save and apply and all your changes will be saved. If we go back and click back onto our project, what we want to do next is build with parameters. And here it looks pretty simple. We have our project name, and here we can choose our script. And as you can see, I click on this drop down. We have again Chrome, Firefox, Electron, or Dashboard. And we can just, we have our description underneath to explain to us what the options mean. And then finally, we have our build button. So when we click that, the build will appear in this build history. Of course, you can choose to find a specific build if you have a lot of them. Um, it tells you the time and date of which the build happened, how long it took, and it tells you if they failed, if they were canceled, or if they were successful. Uh, a neat little thing you can do is like with Cypress dashboard, if you click on the orb symbol, we have a console output just like you would get in your IDE again, and it's pretty much just the same thing. So you can look at that through Jenkins as well. If you go back, that is, that's pretty much the gist of Jenkins. So this is very useful if you have a huge project with a lot of tests that you're constantly changing, or maybe you're adding new ones to cover new functionality or a new addition to the UI for say a website or something. And what you can do is from just from Jenkins, you can you know, run a new build with any volume new changes and only new tests. You can run it, you can choose your options. And when that test has been run, you can simply go to your Cypress dashboard to see all the runs and see what succeeded, what failed, if anything. And basically like a whole bunch of information onto, you know, what happened with each run. And that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? I don't. I asked them in the two times you went through practice. 
That's true. <laughs> I don't think Good I question. have any. Okay. Um, if you want any more information on how to connect, like I said, I couldn't cover everything through this lesson, but I have this document that goes through everything step by step. Again, it's pretty simple. It's just running a bunch of commands, um, downloading a few files, and then the rest of it is basically Jenkins and Cypress dashboard kind of taking the Actually, field, I so. do have a question. Um, yes. So is there, I'm assuming there's a way to set up builds for like older versions of like Google Chrome or like Firefox and all that? Or is that sort of like, is that stuff you can configure? Um, that that depends, I think, more on Cypress because these scripts are coming from Cypress. So I'm taking the commands from Cypress and basically making them you know, more simple and then basically putting them into Jenkins in order to create these options. Uh, I haven't looked into whether or not you can run older versions of Chrome, Firefox, or Electron. I haven't really seen any obvious option for that. So as far as I'm aware, it's just running each different browser. You, you mean each different latest browser? Yeah, each different latest browser. Because even if I look at the test runner here, all I can see is Chrome version 81, which I assume is the latest. Uh, Firefox 72 for beta and Electron 80. Yeah, 81 is the official latest build. Yeah, so in that case, it doesn't seem like an obvious way to test on older versions as of yet. Uh, Google has told us to update anyway to the Lotus Chrome. There's been a, a serious flaw discovered. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, um, are you gonna throw the notes in the Google Drive by any chance? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna uh, put. Uh, yep. Yeah, because I my net just like crapped itself, so I don't beam through the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll put this up on the um, drive so you guys can all see it. Yeah, thanks. Stick this no up problem. on YouTube as well with a link to the notes. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that'll be good. Yep. Okay, I think that's everything. Yep. Yeah, it's cool. awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.